Well, it's the time to start. I don't know why we're starting on time. Might as well. Um, anyway, this presentation, this session is called CoreOS CoreOS and RKT Workflows in Node.js. Um, so we'll be focusing a lot on Node.js, what the interfaces are with CoreOS or what they could be. There's a lot more questions than answers because there's not a lot of documentation. And um, yeah, just a few introductory things, I guess. Uh, this is what we heard from Brandon in the morning. I thought this was very nice because Actually, this is on the fringe, right? There's not too many people writing tools in Node.js for CoreOS or um, RKT. It's a lot of Go and Golang, but I think there could be a role for Node.js to play, and so we can share ideas about that, get inspired about it. Um, this is a, a rough overview of what I think we should talk about in this half hour. And we can start with a short introduction. I don't know how many are using Node.js on, on a daily basis. That's good. We have one. Well, you oh, you two, okay. Let's have a contest. <laughs> Who's doing it more? <laughs> okay, anyway, so we'll take a look at how Node.js uh, script looks, how that works, uh, what NPM is, uh, Node Package Manager, and, uh, just to check that out for the ones who aren't familiar with Node.js. A little background information as well. Um, I kind of like what, what Brandon already talked about, how Kubernetes took um, integrated RKT and where that's all headed. So uh, that may be a little overlap with what we heard in the morning. Now, there are some questions like, why don't we just use the existing tools, fleet Kubernetes, for manipulating uh, containers, RKT containers, and, um, and Core OS infrastructure in general? Um, and if there are good or bad answers to that, kind of depends on the context, on our business, and what type of technology we're serving out and providing. But I think there's a role to play for Node.js, as I said before. In any case, um, we can take a look at Node.js applications running inside containers, which is kind of the easy situation because it's nothing more than a programming language. So you can imagine Python or, or PHP or anything else running in a container. Well, Node.js is actually no different than that. Um, but what I wanted to focus on is um, to see how we can write Node.js applications that actually manipulate CoreOS infrastructure. Something similar to how Heroku does it, for example, if you're familiar with the Heroku platform as a service, um, they're basically giving you a, a, a command line client which is written in Node.js and then you can manipulate the Heroku um, images or, or virtual machines using Node.js. Lastly, um, we'll take a look at some hypothetical use cases and uh, maybe some integration strategy on how we can bring together these two pieces, Node.js and CoreOS, in, in order to cover some of these use cases. Does that sound OK? <laughs> because we could um, make some changes on the fly. So I'll just start with a demo, because I don't know how, what the, just so we're on the same page, right? Anyway, so what's Node.js anyway? I'll uh, show, this, this is what it looks like. I wrote this file, it's called server.js, actually, that's kind of small. Let's see if I can, I don't think I can. But yeah, so I'm, um, I've decided just for the extra challenge, the sadist points to try to do this in Windows. <laughs> and let's see how well that works out. Notepad, or isn't that the name? Server, right. So at least there we get a nice big, uh, FF doesn't work like that. Now you can see that a little better. Anyway, that's a Node.js program, pretty basic thing. Um, we're kind of importing a HTTP uh, module, which is part of Node.js. There are also other modules stored in the NPM registry, but this one is part of the, the what do you call it, the, the base uh, layer of, of Node.js. Anyway, so since we're importing this module, we have um, access to, uh, to, we can consume HTTP-like uh, API service. 
And what we're going to do is write a web server. And this is what? One, two, three, four, well, if you count that, five, six, seven lines. And we basically just wrote a web server. Um, that's what it looks like. It's all JavaScript running on the server. And when we run this, by executing it with the interpreter, which is node, then how shall we do this? It's not going to work because I don't have the HTTP. No, it does work. Normally, I would have to do this. Normally, I would have to do npm install whatever the, whatever the, um, the module is. That's why I didn't think it was going to work. But um, it's already part of the, the base install, as I said. So we'll just run it, node server.js. And then we have a web server. And we can look on localhost. I think I gave it 8080. Is that right? Yeah. So there's a port number there. And if we do that, we'll just get a hello world back, right? Incredible. The demo gods are with us today. We can do this as well, localhost 8080, and then you can't see what I'm typing. I'm typing get slash, and then we get the same thing. So basically, the, the, the module, the HTTP module is doing all the work for us, and we're just uh, consuming uh, what it provides us with. So that's Node.js in a nutshell. I hope that tickled your fancy, right? Anyway, and here is NP NPM, the Node Package Manager. And this basically gives us an infrastructure repository for storing uh, modules and, and libraries, JavaScript packages, right? So HTTP is, is, is one type of module. Uh, we can have a lot of others, like this FS file system, which is part of Node.js as well. And then a lot of third parties write to this NPM, and there's all kinds of stuff. We'll, we'll see that a little later. And basically, when you're going to use this Heroku platform as a service, what you need to do is install it through NP NPM, right? So this is all getting into, into cloud and what CoreOS is all about. Um, and that's what I actually liked about Heroku. And then suddenly I switched to OpenShift. There's some nice things about OpenShift. I mean, there's a whole bunch of platform as a service providers. And they basically... Um, they basically run their service on Kubernetes and Docker package, uh, Docker containers, um, which is all cool and very nice, but I thought it would be nice, nicer to have uh, things working on the command line like I was used to with Heroku. And this is when I started thinking about what type of new infrastructure uh, would be interesting for creating um, pieces or an entire platform as a service. And that's when I started looking at um, core OS, and then suddenly realize, well, there's a missing piece there. Node.js is nowhere to be found. Um, OpenShift is a pretty nice thing to check out if you haven't looked at it, though. In any case, so this is kind of what we have, um, a typical situation. Um, we, uh, well, we can look at this as well from another standpoint. Any, there it is. And basically, as far as the history goes, we, um, where are my notes? There it is. So what we started with in the beginning, uh, there we go. Maybe do a clockwise kind of thing here. If we want to end up with a Node.js controller. So if we just started here, in the beginning there was, well, we take a look at OpenShift before we even had CoreOS in the main stage. And we had then Kubernetes and Docker as I've mentioned. And if we move one generation over, we've got a whole bunch of people coming online. And we've got Azure, for example, and AWS, and Google. And the cool thing is that that's all 
running CoreOS and RK, well, RKT comes next. Um, and then we have some kind of um, exotic things here. I'm not sure if you've heard of the, the Google uh, container engine. But that's kind of um, part of this generation as well. Then moving on, we've got over here, Kubernetes starts to integrate. And it integrates RKT, Rocket. Cool. Now, this is kind of where I'm headed, what I'm interested in, doing more stuff uh, on my own with minimal overhead and really low footprint um, our, uh, rocket containers, ACIs, build them on my own using Node.js, right? And this is kind of what, um, okay, so this is, uh, this is the, um, the Google contain, container engine that I was talking about before. And it, what, it, what it incorporates is uh, Google Compute Engine, CoreOS, and then um, Kubernetes and Docker. And you basically can't swap that out, even though Kubernetes um, supports uh, Rocket, you can't swap out the, the Docker. So we've got all these platforms that are kind of limiting us, uh, the, the ones who want to use Rocket, Rocket for their uh, ACI containers, right? And so I thought it would be a, a, another good example of uh, replacing uh, pieces of this workflow with Node.js applications running, Docker, uh, running Core OS infrastructure. Um, Anyway, they're, they're talking about, um, about doing stuff with CoreOS and Rocket, but there hasn't been too much movement on that, unless, unless I'm wrong about that. Has anybody been using the Google Containment Engine? Yeah? And do you know if they're still saying that they're going to incorporate uh, Rocket? Anything about that? Uh, so it's been that way for like three, four, five months, and doesn't seem to be moving anywhere. So it's kind of frustrating. Um, but there, is, uh, there are other things that we can do with uh, our own uh, development. We can use Kubernetes if we have a, a thick enough infrastructure running in a data center, for example, um, if we have a large deployment, right? So this is kind of not pitting one technology against the other, but um, there are alternatives, right? So there is, um, some things are suitable for fleet Kubernetes and other things are not. And what I think is that there's some shortcomings for both of these. For example, Kubernetes is a very highly coupled. If you take a look at the, um, at the dependencies, the Golang dependencies, the list like, I don't even know how many there are. We can check that out. It's really big. I think it's uh, GitHub. Uh, have you done that? There it is, and the depths are under go depths. Let's take a look at the JSON file. So there we have it. <laughs> I love seeing this list. <laughs> right, so anyway, this is good for, um, for a monolithic application. It has everything built in, all the functionality you could possibly want. But if you want to modify any of these components, if you want a different version or you want to throw stuff out, it's kind of a pain, right? You don't know what to throw out and what to replace it with. And slimming that down is kind of a problem. So that's one of the shortcomings. Uh, if you've got really uh, thin clients or, or, for example, low uh, power devices and you're using containers on those devices, then you won't be able to uh, develop uh, using Kubernetes on there. So you, Got to throw that out. Then you've got fleet and um, another set of advantages and disadvantages. Uh, you don't really have the, um, the functionality for creating or manipulating containers with fleet. So you have to, you have to couple that with, uh, with ACI tool and so on. And you can kind of uh, mix uh, and match your solution. I just thought it would be nice to make one tool, customize it, do it for your own uh, use and uh, make it the way you want. On top of that, um, if you have a pre-existing infrastructure that's uh, web-based in a lot of HTML5 and JavaScript, 
then you could just as well have uh, components in there that are JavaScript compatible in Node.js um, scripts. So there's a lot of reuse there and a lot of um, server-side um, web applications are already running on Node.js. So that's another reason for um, writing applications uh, in Node.js. And uh, there's some things up here, like for example, is a, you have a, a very high degree of granularity if you, if you basically want everything uh, that, that uh, the combination of ACI tool and, um, and Rocket, um, as well as Fleet gives you, then you can use those uh, together if you just want a piece of that um, then, for example, just uh, uh, building ACI uh, containers and serving them out the way uh, some, uh, some, some do, like a, the, the SUSE uh, build service, or not the build service, they had a SUSE studio. So there's, um, there's some good things to think about there. Um, I really like the, the quote from, from Alex. I think he mentioned this at a different conference, maybe it was last year's, but anyways, that's really small, it's at the bottom, and he said that our primary users have existing platforms that they want to integrate containers with. And so basically, if your existing platform is running uh, on web apps and not Golang, then uh, it could be an easier uh, choice to integrate with a JavaScript platform like Node.js. So that's another reason to turn to Node.js. Like I mentioned before, um, the problem of running Node.js in containers, well, it's not even really a problem. There are some things to watch for, like the networking, um, but because actually Node.js kind of assumes it's running on bare metal, so sometimes it's, uh, it's drilling down to drivers to control the network interface and so on, but um, this is, um, this is not so much a problem. I think we can move on. Uh, there is uh, something to mention in that um, it has kind of a history. Node.js has a history with DevOps uh, in places like Joint or uh, Etsy and I think Rackspace as they're monitoring using Node.js tools. So incorporating that into, um, uh, into CoreOS or rather um, considering Node.js when using CoreOS is, is, um, could be a uh, could be a, a slam dunk for some cases. Um, anyway, this is what I'm more interested in personally. Um, I've written some platform code for different customers. It was unfortunately before I knew about CoreOS a couple of years ago. And uh, now, of course, it would be very nice if they were running in containers. But if they were, then I know that I would prefer um, manipulating them with Node.js, and this is a why, um, this, is, this is why uh, it would be uh, one of the uh, potential languages. Now, um, there is actually an advantage. Uh, every time I hear about a platform that's written in Golang, I thank the, 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 the uh, cloud deities, because it's obviously a very, very good choice. Um, and this is uh, kind of the Docker model, which is uh, written in Go, CoreOS is written in Go as well. But, um, uh, but if you take a look at Docker, you th there's a bunch of Node.js uh, uh, libraries for, for that as well. So I think you get like, a hit, you get 1,300 hits or something like that if you search NPM for Docker. Um, so there's, everything is covered. You can basically uh, expose uh, a REST API on your Docker infrastructure, the server, and so on. And even though CoreOS is uh, backing away from putting so much in one, in one monolithic uh, platform, there's probably some, uh, some value in, in taking a look at what they've done and not so much copying it, but avoiding reinventing the wheel. Um, yeah, and what suits CoreOS's model if we're talking about JavaScript and Node.js libraries is, as we mentioned before, is an easier integration in pre-existing pre JavaScript apps and web apps in general. Um, and um, it's basically a very, um, it's got a high utility in command line, uh, quick operations, 
which is the reason that, or one of the reasons that Cordova, for example, turned to Node.js for their deployment model, which wasn't uh, the case in the beginning, but they migrated from some custom uh, deployment where you had to install the thing on whatever platform you were working on. They had a, a Cordova tool to, to uh, create your mobile portable packages. Now they're deploying with Node.js, which means that um, it's just a slightly easier uh, deployment option. You can do things like upgrade with uh, automatic dependencies and so on. Mm. Right, and so this is what you get. Well, I said 1,300, but it's almost. Anyway, 12, 1,200 and so and so. If you search for Docker, um, you get a whole bunch of stuff. I actually made the screenshots because I wasn't sure we'd have connectivity. But MGS. Now that we do have connectivity, it's probably better to try this out. Who knows, maybe there's a little less, 1296, a little more. So every few hours. <laughs> anyway, so um, if you take a look at what they all do, some expose APIs, others just help you on the command line to monitor stuff. Others involve networking, port Docker, I don't even know what that is, Docker command. So there's a whole bunch of stuff, right? And this is, I think, the one that I was trying to make a screenshot of before. I didn't quite make it. And uh, if you take a look at what it does, we can think about if this is relevant to CoreOS. I don't know why it's called PIG, but anyway. So Docker Containment Management Tool. And um, this is a container management tool. So this, this seems to me to be quite appealing for something like Rocket as well, but um, I actually haven't tried this on Docker yet. I've only looked through the documentation. Um, and YAML syntax, which is kind of bizarre. Docker usually uses JSON. Oh, okay, yeah, here it is. So the, here's a sample, and you install it like that. How do I make this bigger? Zoom. Oh, I remember it's like this. Make it bigger like that. Exactly. So anyway, so I guess if you write a pig JSON file and run a, a Docker dash pig command line binary over this JSON file, then you spin up a container or you create one or both, I suppose. I don't know if it runs it automatically. Um, but you can put stuff like Mongo in there. I suppose you could do a pod um, if we did the same, uh, if we ported that to, to Rocket. Uh, and then pig start my app to start your app, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I see, the, the my app comes from the YAML file. Right. But there's just all kinds of stuff. I mean, I was just kind of rummaging through to pick up ideas. Command line reference. And this is, this is quite a rich one. A lot of them that if were created four months ago and there's been two releases or something. This, this one looks pretty good. Anyway, so, so that was uh, 1,293 hits for, for searching Docker. And let's just try that now with with CoreOS, and what do we hit then? So we get 71 hits, that's not too many. Um, there's a few things in here that are interesting, but let's take a look. And a lot of them are, are recently created and abandoned, like they're still at zero, Cluster, this one looks okay. I think this one uses Rackspace. So yeah, let's check that out. I actually have used the, the Azure uh, NPM mo Node.js module, and this one looks quite well made and maintained as well. But as you can see, there's some stuff there. There's just um, not as much as, as for Docker. So we have 1,200 for Docker and 71. And I think this is useful if we're looking, if we're kind of shopping for a, a, a new um, technology that better suits our uh, existing infrastructure, kind of like BlaBlaCar was doing when they discovered D, DGR, DGR. I found that pretty interesting, Simon's uh, lecture. That's from the last hour, in case you weren't there. That was really good. 
you can check that out probably by watching the video. And just in a nutshell, so Blablacar was uh, uh, trying to containerize their infrastructure. They didn't know which direction to go, and they went with CoreOS, and then they wanted a tool that would automate their, um, their ACI building. Uh, because they were using Chef for that, which wasn't working out. And so they came across a, um, uh, a Golang-based uh, uh, utility called DGR and settled on that. And that's kind of what the last lecture was about. It was a pretty cool lecture. Anyway, so if you're shopping like that and you're considering you know, other things uh, other than, than whatever uh, existing infrastructure Go, uh, um, CoreOS with Go provides, then uh, you have the option, for example, of Node.js, you know that now, and one of the ways to do this shopping is, you know, you can go to N NPM and see what's available. And then if there's nothing available there, then you do the same search for, for Docker, which we had before, and there's definitely the thing that you need for Docker, and you just need to port it, right? So that would be kind of the, the, the way to, to go about searching and integrating. Okay, let's go back. All right. And then I went one step further because I really liked the idea of slimming everything down to the maximum and then just trying to basically take um, uh, an arc a rocket ACI uh, container and run that without even using uh, ETCD or fleet or anything else. I thought that would be a very interesting research project and see how thin we can get this um, this software to run, see if it can run, for example, on low power devices, battery operated. Um, why would you want to do that if so many of the uh, cloud-based infrastructure is running in data centers? Well, because probably in some day we're going to have things called the Internet of Things where if uh, we all believe the hype, then things are going to be communicating with each other and going to be contributing uh, computational uh, uh, power, and they're going to be distributing loads of computing, right? So we still have the, the cloud environment, or it could be the next generation of cloud environment, and we'll have to have the containers distri distributed on all these extremely low power devices, which then make it a little bit more difficult for really, really fat programs like uh, Kubernetes that offers everything to everyone, right? And so I thought, let's see if we can create something really small using Node.js and some rocket um, library that's already uh, maybe in NPM, and I type that in. <laughs> okay, I'm just, just so you believe me, I'm gonna do it again right now. And let's see what we come up with today. I'll be thanking, if it's more than one, I will be very surprised. Whoops, it's not more than one. So anyway, check that out, and it's really sad. <laughs> so actually, it's about, I would, I would call that half. <laughs> I don't even think that's one. In any case, we, don't, we basically have nothing for RKT. That's the state of affairs with uh, Node.js and, and CoreOS. Um, so if we want to solve this problem, if we're interested in making Node.js the first uh, class citizen of the CoreOS family, like Golang already is, um, then we've got some work to do, right? And this is kind of where there's more questions than answers. Um, it's always depending on the, 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 the business case and the industry and yeah, the, the infrastructure that you have. If it's uh, running on all, all bare metal, like blah, blah, car, or on a certain uh, provider, then you may go one direction or another. Uh, the few things that I've come up with is to basically start out by porting, because obviously there's a need for these things, for RKT, AC tool, and so on. And if we just had the same thing uh, running on, on, in JavaScript using Node.js as a, a server-side platform for that so that we can write stuff from the command line and you know, spin up a, a very small container or something like that, I think that would go a long ways. And then, uh, and then if we... Um, if we pick and choose and, and refactor the JavaScript code in order to make that portable into jQuery or, where, or whatever other um, framework that we want to use for our JavaScript, then that would be a plus, right? So that's kind of um, the, the idea of how to start with this since we're at the very beginning, not at the very beginning, but CoreOS is really a Golang uh, project. 
Um, yeah, and then in any case, uh, upload to NPM and see if there is interest. Um, I actually did this with Docker. Um, I come from the Docker world, so, and um, I'm the maintainer of, um, of a bunch of ARM packages over there, which are tailored for IoT, so a lot of messaging, M2M, machine-to-machine messaging, and so on. And uh, yeah, it's always a problem because obviously Docker and um, CoreOS is a is a AMD64 uh, instruction set um, uh, platform, right? So it gets challenging. And um, but the the good news is that Intel is is making a lot of very low powered. Uh, they they would be ARM powered boards, but obviously because Intel wants to push their chips there. Um, putting a lot of boards out there, Galileo's, Edison's, and now Curie's, which, um, which are still Intel technology. And this is where I can see this heading, where CoreOS could be running on very low-powered uh, devices. It just depends on which side of the boundary and the limits of fringe we're talking about, right? Because this is like, is it, it's definitely development, but if it's DevOps, you know, traditional data center type of thing, well, it's um, questionable. So that's... Um, I'd be interested to see what people think about that. Yeah, I was going to do a demo, but um, had some connectivity problems. So I made some screenshots instead, right? And if I lie about it, you probably can't tell the difference. OK, no, I'm not going to lie. I'll tell the truth. This is kind of, um, this is how you start out when you are using, um, I'll show it to you. It's over here. It's called, I'll search for Core OS on the NPM registry. And I think the very first one that we hit, which is poorly maintained, you need all kinds of hacks to get it working. But this is what you need to do. You install it, right? Install the NPM package. And then this is the code. Basically, I think I have this somewhere. There it is. Right, and so what you're doing is providing your subscription, which is your, your, your account identifier that tells uh, the system which, uh, which account we're talking about here. Um, the, 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 the programmers or the developers of this module, I think they intended uh, for it to be cross-platform, so it wasn't only Azure, it could be AWS Cloud or, or Rack Space or whatever else. But they kind of bailed. It seems like this is stagnating. And basically, you can remove this because it, it only supports Azure. Um, and then you've got PEM for a certificate. This is your access to, so it's replacing a password, basically. This is uh, how you can SSH in or um, access the API of your account. And this is basically a certificate, right? So you're giving the private key here. Um, right, and once you add the account on, uh, on the Node.js command line, or in a Node.js script, uh, then you can do things like create containers. You can say a location, North Europe, whatever, and then you get questions asking you, well, how many cores and you know, SSD or, or spinning disks or whatever um, options and customization you would like for your Azure um, uh, platform. And in theory, it's a really nice thing to have, um, but it just is poorly maintained. And so what I ended up with was this. This is a machine, and it was working and everything, but it's just kind of a, a thin solution. It, it really doesn't, if you look at, at what you can do with it, it's not much. So here are all of the, um, you can create. They, you can SSH, uh, start an SSH server, I suppose. I'm not sure what that does. And that's it, I guess. I guess it, flee, what's this? Execute a command. So you're basically creating a child process. Right, so anyway, and that seems to be abandoned. But it was a nice thing when um, it was uh, still moving along in development. And I think we can use it as a model in any case. Um, because if we do create a cross-platform thing, or if we have a particular uh, platform that we're most interested in, a favorite platform, whatever it is, doesn't need to be Azure then this is kind of a, a nice start. Uh, so that's another way to integrate, I think, Node.js into CoreOS. Um, right. And um, so if, 
you know, I'm, it's, I'm not trying to convince anyone, but if you fit any of these situations, or if you think about what uh, Node.js could bring to the CoreOS family, if it was just made a first-class citizen like Golang, right? And um, we had some tools, some utilities that are written in Node.js that could be portable to other platforms because JavaScript is ECMA or whatever, um, standardized. Then we have these, uh, these are just kind of some ideas. Um, if then, uh, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of ideas, actually. We've got instant interfaces to IoT, right? Because of all, all the kinds of things that we have in Node.js, the different modules and libraries. Um, we have a nice model of how to deploy tools in Cordova. Um, we could do backups of ACI containers uh, without paying attention to ECD, without leveraging it for the backups. We do our own special backup uh, infrastructure, for example. Um, we, we could serve up containers, custom-made containers. You type in what you need, how much memory or, or, or what uh, applications, what uh, stacks you want on there. And then you, you hit download, or it probably takes a few minutes if it's like the SUSE Studio. And then you get, a, 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 um, you get, you get either specification or yeah, or a container, an ACI, um, download that. You could do all these kind of things. I think this would be pretty cool. Um, over the air updates onto low energy uh, embedded machines, right? Low power hardware would be better supported. You have finer granularity. You could leave out everything that you don't need. Um, WebSocket, so you've got all the things that you need for communicating with mobile, for example, because of um, well, the web technology that's inherent in, in JavaScript-based uh, uh, web apps, right? Uh, Socket.io, for example. Socket.io is a Node.js module. So um, there's some things to think about. And if this runs out, if we run out of ideas, we just need to take a look at, at the Docker list, um, the hits that we get when we look up Docker on, on NPM registry, right? Because uh, there's just everything in there. Right, and that's, um, I think that's all. Oh, there's a container. Right, anyway, needed to have a cat in there. Um, that's all I have, and I think there were a lot of questions that are still unanswered because we're pretty much at the beginning of the, the intersection of these two different worlds, Node.js web apps and web application development together with um, the traditional uh, core OS and, and even going back to Docker and Kubernetes, everything in, in Golang. So I think there's something to explore there. and. I hope uh, you agree. Um, so keep a watch out on NPM uh, because I'm hoping that these core OS uh, modules will start going up from 71 up to whatever, 1,000 would be nice. And um, who knows, maybe we can collaborate on there as well. I think I'll be doing something uh, to upload uh, as far as the rocket goes.